Testing, testing, can everybody hear me? Let me know. Let me know if everyone can hear me and let me know if everyone can see the slide. Welcome. Hey there, Tom. Thank you, Kathy. It is 4.30 on Tuesday, December 7th. Welcome everyone. We're gonna talk about earning a living trading gaps and specifically for next year, 2022. It's hard to believe that we only have a few more days left in the year of 2021. And in many ways, I think um, it was a very interesting year. Of course, we went through COVID in 2020. Um, I live in Manhattan and really Manhattan has still not gotten out of COVID. So I think 2021 was harder than 2020 in many ways for many New Yorkers. Now, it's interesting, depending on where you live in the world, things might be back to normal. The one thing, though, that is sort of back to normal is the market. Although I have prefaced pretty much in every television spot that I've appeared on that I still think there's a 50-50 chance that the, mar uh, that, the, um, that the country could shut down again, that we could have another lockdown or some, some type of lockdown. They're already talking about restricting travel, all kinds of things. We're living in a market right now that is very volatile. We rallied today, last week we sold off. It's sort of where you don't know what you're gonna get in any, any day. You get up in the morning and you just play it as you see it. So the strategy that I trade is based on gaps. We will talk about what a gap is here in a minute. The reason that I like gaps is because they have momentum. And in volatile trading periods, momentum happens and momentum is good if you know how to play it we go long we go short but ultimately it is the idea of getting the stock or the market if you're playing the market in the correct direction and then obviously we want a big move because if i get a big move in something then i can make a lot of money i do not trade low float stocks i do not trade cheap stocks or stocks under a dollar penny stocks I don't think there's any reason to trade those things, <clears throat> and I don't trade any of the Reddit stocks either. So I'm looking specifically for stocks that are companies that you would know of, that you've heard of, that you would recognize. Um, and I will do gaps for many, many reasons. Some are earnings, some are news gaps, some are gaps with the sector or the market. Again, if you don't know what a gap is, we're going to talk about that shortly. But we get a play pretty much every day. Once in a while, we don't get at something if it's slow, but we pretty much get a trade every day. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> Excuse me. So if anyone has any questions, they can email me at Melissa at the stock swish.com after this. And if you would like a trial to the trading room this week, you can feel free to email me too. Um, I will be happy to give you a trial for the remainder of the week. We have Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Okay. This is me. If you have questions, you can call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. And you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. Okay, so again, today is December 7th. Hard to believe, and today is almost over. 2022 is right around the corner. I've been thinking about my goals for 2022 pretty much the last, I'd say, 60 days. Things I want to accomplish, dreams getting the wheels in motion for the next year it's never too late to wait i mean it's never too early to start what you can do is wait too late so for example if you've been trading this year and you've lost money you could still have a positive month of december especially if you join my group but if you've lost money for the entire calendar year 2021 trading it's going to be hard for you to make 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 up the year so you kind of have to just move forward into the following year and set your goals for 2022. And again, I think this is good for things besides trading. Personal goals, professional goals. And you can call them New Year's resolutions if you want. I call them goals. I don't, I don't really have New Year's resolutions. New Year's resolution would be something like if you want to stop smoking. I never smoked. I'm not a smoker. I prefer to look at it like goals. Things you want to accomplish. Where do you want to be 12 months from now? Six months from now? Three months from now? Okay. Spring of... 2022 but either way you don't want to go into 2022 without help and support so you can be less stressed with your trading and i think a lot of people do not understand certain things about trading they're making decisions and they're confused 
and they're back and forth and they're wishy-washy and that is a problem. This market is lending itself to that because again, if you look at the last just five days of trading, some days the market rallied, some days the market sold off. And so it can be confusing unless you're knowing specifically what you're looking for. So it's important to know what you're looking for and that will help you in order to make money because the goal is profits. That is the reason that I trade while I enjoy it. Again, the nice thing about day trading or options trading, we're gonna talk about, talk about both today, is that you can do it from home and it's fun. I enjoy doing the trading room, that's fun too. But really, it wouldn't be any fun at all if I didn't make money. So the fun part is making money. And you can't forget that. Again, that has to be your goal. Not just, you know, having the camaraderie of being in a trading room with other people and looking at charts. While taking trades and pressing the buttons in and out is fun, it's the idea of actually seeing the profit. That's what we want. And I'm seeing a couple of people here pop in late. You can ask me questions as we go along. Just type in the room. Anyways, you need a plan of action to make money trading. I think too many people are wishy-washy about their trading because they don't know what to do, so they wait for the market to open, they see what stocks are moving, and they make a decision between 10 and noon what to trade. I'm talking about just general retail day traders. I have a plan of action before I get up, or before I even trade, before the market opens, when I get up in the morning, I go through a checklist. It is my system. This is what you'd come and learn from me if you want to learn it. I see some students here tonight, some of you have learned it. I see some new people that are already signed up. You will learn it in the class this month. I just go through and I rate every single gap that I see that I might want to trade. I do this all when I get up in the pre-market. Could be 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m. I know what I'm doing by 9 o'clock, usually definitely by 9.30. That's my plan of action. Today we did Apple. We actually went long Apple. Today in the day training room, it worked. Okay, so that was my gap today. We will talk about this chart in here. So I pick one thing a day. That is my focus. That is my plan of action. You do not need to have more than one thing a day to make money. Again, because this isn't about gambling or just throwing darts at a board like taking pot shots. You want to be very uh, targeted, like you're trying to throw a bullseye against the wall. Do you know what I mean? And any questions, go ahead, you can write them in the room. So my plan of action every day to make money is to what? To look for the best gap. I'm looking for the best gap. I try to find it. And what do I mean by the best one? I mean the one that's gonna have the biggest move, okay? I mean the one that's going to follow through regardless of the market. So like, I don't care what the market's doing. Again, market's difficult to read. So I wanna do something that doesn't need the market. And I also want to do something that I can get in, in and out quick. Trying to get in and out of trades fast, as fast as I can. Hopefully between, you know, half an hour, first hour of the day. So let's go over here, what is a gap? Now this is a daily chart of the QQQs. What is going on here? You see the rally, the sell off in October, the rally, we made new highs in November, ran up right before Thanksgiving. Whatever day this was here, I think it was the 22nd. <laughs> excuse me, we had a gap up. So a gap up is the difference between the close and the open. Market closed here, open higher. Rally fell. Then it closed here, then it gap down, then it fell. So this was a gap up, this was a gap down. Okay, here was another one over here. This closed here, gap down, fell. Could have shorted the market this day, could have done a put. What about over here, back in October? <clears throat> this was a gap up, closed here, gapped up, rally. Could have gone long the market here, okay? So again, the idea is to get the correct gap and play it in the correct direction on any specific day. Now the market gaps most days of its life, all right? So we don't trade the market every day, but sometimes I will. Okay, sometimes I will. But it's very interesting because you have to look at the gap. And what I'm doing is I'm looking for it in the pre-market. And then I'm trying to determine in the pre-market if it's going to fall or rally. And that's where I determine if I'm going to take a long or a short. 
So why do you need a plan of action again to trade? Because there's millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of people trading the market, even retail traders, specifically now with the invention of Robinhood and all kinds of ways for people to trade, even with small dollar amounts, there's so many people in the market fighting for the same bag of money. And you have billions of dollars in the market. You have hedge funds, you have big traders, you have banks. You have retail traders as well. You have retirement funds. So everybody wants what? The money. Not everybody can win. And in fact, most people that trade lose. Why? Because again, when you're trading, you, in order to win, are taking money from somebody else. Okay? So somebody, we, we won, we made money today going long Apple. We went long it. Somebody lost. Somebody shorted Apple. Probably a couple days ago when it made a topping tail. They lost today. We won. You take money from somebody else when you make it, okay? It's not like I'm sitting here and I'm sewing a jacket and then I'm going out in the streets of Manhattan and I'm trying to sell that jacket for a price and I have a product and it's exchange of goods and services. That is not what trading is. When the money comes into my account, it's from an action that I take. And that action, again, is a concentrated action and it is an action with forethought that I thought out ahead of time. It is pre-planned and I know what I'm doing, okay? Versus what many, many people do, which is just press the button not knowing what they're doing, okay? I call it conviction. I have a high level of conviction when I decide that I wanna do something. You can't gamble. That is the other reason why you need a plan of action. Because again, and specifically in this market, I mean, I have no idea where we open tomorrow. We rallied today, but who knows? Again, this COVID has been an overlay of the markets for the last 19 months, and it will continue to be one as well, besides the backdrop of the economy. But if you're gambling, you can't have consistent results. You have to have a pre-planned reason for taking the trade. Whatever that trade is, whatever you want to do, okay? Because the market can be very volatile. So let's just go back for the last couple of days. I plopped this in here this morning, so I don't have today's bar. Uh, actually, let me let's let me just see here. I'm gonna try to click this off and bring up today. Fun. Can everybody see the chart? I may as well just bring this up. Can everybody see it? So anyways, made new highs, dropped, fell, rallied, fell, rallied, fell, fell hard, fell off a planet, rallied, gapped up and failed, fell off another planet, rallied. This was yesterday on Monday to start the week. Today's Tuesday, and we rallied today. Who do we, where do we go tomorrow? Who knows? Do you see how choppy? And this is just since really Thanksgiving. So I expect that December will continue to be a volatile month, okay? And that is, again, why it's very important that you have a pre-planned decision before you trade what you want to do and why you take trades where you don't need the market. Since I have this up here, I'll show you the apple. Before we go back to this, we did this today. So here was apple, closed here, gapped up, rallied ran up. So this was a long. Everybody see it? So we went long this today as a day trade and we did calls in it in the options newsletter. We got in, out, boom. Okay. I'll go back. So volatility is here and that's good for traders wide because you can get big moves and it really separates the, the people that are good at what they do that are smart from the people that are dumb. It really separates the winners from the losers. When you get a lot of volatility, it really, if you know what you're doing, you can make a lot of money. And if you don't, you're gonna lose. But you should, you should always lose if you don't know what you're doing. But sometimes people make money and they don't know what they're doing. Why? The market has been bullish the entire year, pretty much, of 2021. We rallied back from those March lows in 2020 when COVID hit, and we've, looked, we've really never looked back. But the reality is many people went long go, uh, going long stocks and then rallied, and the traders didn't know what they were doing, and they rallied anyways, okay? So the fact is, 
volatility actually separates the people that know what they're doing for the people that don't and it is good it is good because it is the idea that you have the opportunity to make a lot of money when you're trading if you know what to do okay because you will get big moves and people will get slammed and pushed around in their trades up down up down up down and again that's why you need a plan of action and a focus to decide what to do okay so let's just go over what is volatility real quick. Volatility often refers to the amount of uncertainty or risk related to the size of change in the security's value. A higher volatility means that a security's value can potentially be spread out over a larger range of values. Up, down, up, down, big, wide, woo, like the market I just showed you. This means that the price of the security can change dramatically over a short period in either direction. And again, that could be in several seconds in, during the live day. If the market's open from 9.30 to 4, it could be in seconds, it could be in minutes, it could be in hours. A lower volatility means that a security's value does not fluctuate dramatically and tends to be more steady, which is, you know, which is most normal days, to be honest with you, that stocks trade steadily. But for me, I like the volatility. And again, if you're new to this, that's okay. If you want to come to me, you could, would learn my system, all right? That is what I teach in the class. Again, I know some of you already signed up for the class in two weeks, but the class is based on my system for finding gaps and rating gaps to pick the good one every day. It is not like this is rocket science or brain surgery. I was on the phone with somebody the other day and we were talking about targets and a trade. I forget what it was, it was last week. And you know, I said to the person, you know, I just reiterated what the target was, what I had said in the room, the, the stock went there. It got 30 cents actually over the number. This isn't really difficult. I think the reason that many people find trading difficult, actually it's twofold. There's two reasons people find trading difficult. And if you've been at this a long time, you know what I mean. One, people really do not have a strategy that works. They trade every day or a consistent basis and they're using a strategy that simply does not have a high win ratio it just has more losers than winners. It doesn't matter how good the person is at reading a chart. The strategy doesn't work. They need a good strategy. And if they don't change what they're doing, they're going to continue to lose. Most people don't have a strategy that's good, that works to trade, that wins. And some people don't have a strategy at all. The second reason a lot, of, a lot of traders, beginners, advanced traders, people who do this a long time that have been at it, the second reason that most people lose is that people are very, very much in a fear-based mode when they trade. So they will kill a trade that they're down in, even if it's perfectly fine, even if it's not doing anything at all, even if it's not doing anything wrong, they will kill it if they're down because they're scared. Most people trade in fear. So how do you combat that, at least for the second point, for the fear point, information and knowledge? A good system will push you out of the fear because a good system will mean you can consistently see green, no matter even if it's $100 a day or $50 a day. The more days you're green, you're going to get out of that fear bubble. And I say to people, if you're in fear mode, then you've got to cut your risk back anyways. But people are always chasing losses that they've had in the past if they've been attempting to trade, and unsuccessfully so, for two years, three years, five years, ten years. I have people that have been attempting to trade that have been following me in my marketing list as long as I've had the stock switch now, which is ten years, over 10 years and they still have not gotten it together and still have not done the class they are afraid and so i think it is so important to move out of that fear and again we were talking about 2022 and if you have want to make goals for yourself one of the goals that you want to set for yourself is being more relaxed with your trading and the way that you can do that is cut your risk back and make sure that you are using a system that works Sometimes it's difficult for people to be honest with themselves and look in the mirror and say, you know what, I've been buying support and, and shorting rallies or doing whatever. I've been doing this for 25 years and I hate to admit that this doesn't work because I've been doing it for so long, but it doesn't. Sometimes it's the hardest thing for people to realize that they were wrong. You're better off in the long run doing that, okay? It's the idea of moving forward. I do think there's something special about the year 2022. I have to look it up. Numbers have meaning. I have to look it up on a numerical chart. I'm sure that it does because of the number of twos in the year. You want to make sure that you have a positive year next year. And I think it's good to have it in your head to have a cl good close to this year. I said to everybody, we are had a great November. We're going to have a good December too. I'm extremely, extremely focused. Any questions here? Okay, we keep talking.
Let's talk more about what is a gap. So we shorted Facebook on November 30th. Feels like a long time ago. It was only last week, I think. Was this last week? No, it was two weeks ago. Closed, no, it was last week. No, it was two weeks ago. Closed here, gap down, fell. We shorted it. Boom, boom. See the red. So you could have done a put in this. You could have done an equity trade short. We played the gap. Where's the gap? Stock closed here, gap down. Closed at one price, opened at a lower price, fell. So I got up in the morning, I rated the gap, and then we did Facebook. It continued. That really fell. What is another example of a gap? Zoom. We've done this a lot, a lot over the last month, but I'll just show you a few here. This closed here, gap down. This was Zoom earnings. I don't know what their earnings said. I don't care. Down here's the volume. The stock fell. It tanked, actually. And this stock can move a lot. Talk about volume. Talk about momentum. Everything I'm doing is momentum. This is momentum trading. I'm trading the momentum. What's the momentum in Zoom? It was to the downside here. So we short it. We short it and you can do a put. If you don't know what a put is, that basically is a short in an options trade. Okay? So here's the drop. Boom. This stock can go 20 bucks without blinking an eye. Now, we were talking earlier about volatility. The stock had a big move up here. Failed. But if you were shorted and you killed it or something, or you lost money doing something here, look what happened. It did continue. It did continue. Again, these are the things that often trip people up. Oh my God, now it's rallying. Now, what do I do? No. It was a good short. And again, you could have got in and out of here. But the fact was, it did follow through. And it did continue. Why? The gap rated good per the system. That tells me, focus on this as a short. Okay? Any questions here? Quiet group tonight. Hello! Is anybody there? Let me know you're alive. I know Kathy's there. <laughs> Shane said yes, he's alive. <laughs> Tom's typing, he's alive too. Great. Okay, so let's continue. We're focused on what gaps? So again, it's the idea of having one system that you pull everything together so that you see what the results which is the money because trading is not black and white it just isn't you can't say well i'm going to go along everything that's on the 20 period moving average i'm going to buy every pullback and doop -ba doop -ba do no it doesn't work like that again if trading was that simple no one would ever lose it's not it is a entire system where you put all the pieces of the puzzle together to get the picture ahead of time. So I pull all the pieces of the puzzle together in the morning in the pre-market when I'm rating the gap, just like I did with Apple. I put the puzzle together and I said, you know what? I'm predicting that Apple is going to do this, have a green bar on the day, and that's what it did, and it rallied. So you have to put all the pieces of the puzzle together to see what the picture is. It's never just one thing or two things. That is another mistake traders make as well because people desperately want it to be that simple, but it's not. But again, this is not brain surgery. It's simply knowing what to do. And once you learn it, then you know what to do. And then hopefully it will be simple, okay? But with a consistent strategy, you can see results. That's how you can earn a living trading. You can't even begin to get to the point where you are going to earn a living doing this as your full-time job, even though really I trade part-time. And really, the market's only open for six and a half hours, but we trade it really uh, with focus in the morning. But you cannot even get to that point if you don't even have a strategy that has a high win ratio. Like, you can't even do this part-time. You can't even do this at all, one hour a week, if you are not seeing consistent results. Because eventually, it will wear on you that you're losing, and you'll be tired of refunding your account, you'll be tired of doing it, and it won't be fun anymore. The fun part is winning. The fun part is the money, okay? That is the fun part of trading, and again, that has to be at the forefront, okay? This was the month of November. We've started December. December has been a winning month so far, too. I do not have December's trades in here. We have, we did Apple today. We did Zoom yesterday. We did Zoom on Friday. 
I forget what we did Thursday or was Thursday was Thursday November I don't even know I've lost track of the days now <laughs> but anyways we had a good month we had an 82% win ratio now we had 16 winners of four losers two break-even trades 22 trades in all and actually one of the trades I did which was NVIDIA on the 22nd was a winning trade I didn't get out with profit I let it go against me I should not have done that. Some people did get out with profit in the room. I was looking for a much bigger target and it didn't hit it. So that was a mistake on my part. We still had a huge month despite that. But the average risk per trade with these results was $2,700 a trade. These are day trades. These are not options. These are equity trades. You have to take the trades on margin. We do something like Facebook. You have to have a margin account in order to day trade. If you have questions about that, you can ask me now or email me, okay? But regardless, whatever your risk would have been the month of November, everyone made money the month of November that was in the room with me. You, it would have been impossible to, do, to not. We had, we had way too many winners. And so far, we're having a winning December. It's all about the focus. I run the room. I run the live room. I call the trades in the room. I call the entry, the exit. We talk about targets and everything else. And I'm the one that doesn't work in the rating in the morning. You must do my class to join the room. It is a prerequisite. And you should be writing the gaps if you join and do the class and the room with me. Now, not everybody does. People want to roll out of bed, get up late. I get it. And I'm the one that has the best, uh, you know, the best vantage point of everything because I created the system. So I have a very good eye to see what's going to work. But the fact is the idea is for you to learn it. And if you learn it, again, this is how you will move away from the fear and you will train better if you understand it. That is the whole philosophy, and that's the reason that I require everyone to do the class to join the room. I'm trying to develop people into good traders. It takes time as a process. It does not have to take forever, particularly if I'm calling good trades, like, like I called today in the Apple. These are all gap plays, every single one of them. We're going to go over the diamonds of Facebook here next. Everything I do is a gap. I won't do it if it's not a gap. The days here where I said no trades, there were no good gaps. So there are gaps every day, but it doesn't mean I think they're good. Do you follow me? So my criteria, which is the checklist, it is a rating system, tells me whether or not the gap's any good. It's a 26-point checklist. That is what you learn in the class. It's a 16-hour class. We cannot go over that today. One, I charge money for the class and my time, and two, it's 16 hours. That is how I make the determination that something is going to be a what I call a good gap, or I term the coin golden gap, because it's like finding gold in the market if you can find something that works. I only need one per day. The days I did more than one, like on the 30th, I saw the market would fall. That's why we did the diamonds. That was the best ETF I liked of the day, but everything fell that day, which I saw. So everything was a gap play in here. And actually, Peloton, we did a million times. In fact, let's look at that right now. That Peloton, we did a trillion times this month. I haven't looked at that here lately. Let's just look at that. Forgot about that. In fact, let's look at this today with the market rallying. This fell on earnings again. I don't know why. Not that I care, but it is unusual considering we got a COVID variant, boop a doop a doo. I don't know why Zoom and Peloton have been falling off a planet with this new variant. So it's kind of weird, but they have been tanking. Let's look at this one here. Uh, Alice, if you're writing a question, I can't read it. Oh, look at this thing. Woo. Yeah. Well, again, I'm not in anything in this right now. We did do this a lot of times this month. But look, look at it. Look at it here. Keep an eye out for that. Something's going to set up in that again. I don't know when, but something is going to soon. Okay, where was I? Peloton. Okay. Anyways. Let's go to Facebook. So we did this on the 30th. Actually, this was Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday. That was last week. 29th was Monday. So on Tuesday, we did Facebook of the Diamonds. We, we fell. It was a nice move. Entry was 333.50. Shares were 1,400. We added at 334.50. Total shares 2,800. Average price was 334. 
Sometimes I'll do an ad if I really am in love with it and I say it's gonna go, it's gonna go. I doubled up on it. Exit was 326.65. So you see this move here. You see this move here. So the average price was 334. You could have had 100 shares. Look at the money you would have made. The move was almost $10. It was about eight bucks, seven something. It's fantastic. We got it. We got the momentum. Huge profit, but it was a big position, 20,580. You could have taken half this. You could have taken 500 shares and added and had 1,000 shares. Again, you would have made over seven grand. A beautiful call. We got the perfect entry. I got the gap right at the perfect time. We did the ad. Again, that's something that I teach. It's an advanced concept, but it's when I know something is going in my direction and I have 100% conviction it's gonna go and I wanna just even plop it on more. It's kind of like doing two trades in one. We did that with this. I didn't do that with the diamonds, but we did that with this. I could have done it. I could have done it with the diamonds that day because I knew it was gonna go. In this case here, in this particular day, we had the market with us, which helped, okay? Alice, did you have a question? Um, does anybody have a question? Okay, let's talk about the diamonds. This was the 30th. Closed here, gap down, fell. Boom. We shorted this. Again, it was a gap down. It was a gap down. We sold off here. See that too. Entry 349.50, shares were 3,500, exit 344.86. Profit was 16,240, beautiful. Again, it was this particular day here. Let me just go back. Again, you see the move, $4, $5, $7, $8. You see how we're getting, it's, it's momentum. How do you make money in the market? Momentum. And then you add to the size. How do you take size? Well, you gotta know what you're doing. One, you have to have the cash to take the size. Two, you have to have the margin. And three, you gotta know what you're doing. Because even if you have the cash to take the size, you can't take size like this and risk you know, over $2,000 a train or even add to it if you don't know what you're doing. That's crazy town. You have to know what you're doing. You should know what you're doing if you're risking $100 a trade, okay? And Bird, I see you in here. I know you're new, you haven't done the class yet. I'll follow up with you tomorrow to make sure you get anything tomorrow, but I would go easy. I would start out slow until you do the class. Bird just joined. Okay, actually, hang on one second. A, a TV channel just emailed me right now as I'm talking to you about being on tomorrow morning. Let me just write her back. Does anybody have any questions? Hold on. I'm doing a lot of TV lately. I'm on Newsmax Thursday morning at 6.40 a.m. All right, sorry about that. Okay, where are we? Any questions about Facebook? Any questions about the diamonds? Any questions about shorting? Again, we rallied today. How do I know where we're gonna be tomorrow? I don't, I don't, because why? You go to bed at night and then you get up in the morning. The market closes. There is something called a post market. That is one of the reasons why gaps even occur in the first place. The Forex market is a 24 hour market and only has one close a, 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 a week. The US market closes every single day at four during the live trading day and it has a post market and the post market closes. I think the post market closes at eight o'clock and then it opens in the morning and it's called the pre-market. So between now and then stuff happens, trades go off. Sometimes it's buying, sometimes it's selling. That's where the gaps are occurring overnight. And we get up in the morning early and we see where the gaps are okay so i'm not predicting the gap itself you understand that i see it boom i see it when i get up and then i determine if i'm going to trade it like i didn't know apple was going to get up today but i saw it i saw it in the morning i utilized my system i did the worksheet i rated the gap then we went long it but I didn't know that was going to do that. You know what I'm saying? So you have to wait for the gap. Any questions? So you can use the system for options as well as day trading, which is positive. Now, again, 
options are different because you only need a cash account for options. You don't need necessarily a margin account and you can trade options with a small risk because you don't need margin. If an option cost is a dollar, you would pay what? If you got 10 contracts, it would cost you $1,000. You can't lose any more than $1,000 even if the whole trade loses. So options are really a, a, a way for people to trade with less cash okay lower costs and you only need to, you can only need two thousand dollars to open up an options account in any retail place okay well, how do we do options we buy calls and we buy puts and that's it and then i get out of them and i'm taking them in the direction of the gap too so here's what we did in apple here it is now we did one in apple actually last week we did the 170s in apple which expired on friday so it had to go this was a good cost here meaning it was cheap i thought a dollar 90. i have an advanced trader risk and a beginner trader risk 40 contracts was an advanced risk 7600 sold at 350 profit was 6400 an 84 percent return investment that's a nice trade this was a call i'm going to show you the gap let's go back to wednesday here we go here we are now, this may look kind of funky here, but actually, it gapped up. We did the trade, we got out. Oh, this was the one I was telling you about because I was on the phone with Shelly, and I said it's going to go to 170. It went to 170.30, and we got we all got out at 170. She did she did the right thing. She listened to me, and then it and then it tanked. Now, I didn't know I was going to do this, but I knew that 170 was the target. We got out there. Anyways, closed here, gapped up, rallied. Take it, get out. Boom. This was last week. Beginner risk of 196 contracts, 1140, 350, 960, boom. Again, return on investment, 84%. Some trades I get to 100%. Some trades I get to more than 100%. But again, if the target's 170 and it goes there and it's 84% out, again, you have to be in that mode where you're seeing it and you're reading it. You can't be so black and white that you're like, I'm not getting out of anything until it goes to 100%. You're going to lose in trades where you're up a good amount then. If, you don't, if you're waiting for everything to go to 100%, not everything is going to go to 100%. But some things will go to more than that. What? We did trades in the diamonds. We did, we did options in Facebook. We did puts in those from last week. But the fact is, we had everything going in our favor. And we had piggy targets in those. Why? They were working. They came in. The selling came in swift and fast. And everything was going in the same direction that was in the market that day. So you have different, different days where you do different things. How do you know this? You're going to be in the room. How do you know that? You listen to what I say and you learn it. I see Galahad pop in here. How are you doing, Galahad? Okay, so what else was I going to say here now? Hold on. We were talking about... forget what we're talking about any questions we're talking about I'm on TV in the next two mornings early <laughs> so after this I've got to go to bed <sighs> I'm on cheddar tomorrow morning at 725 and Newsmax 640 Thursday early early bed nights for me so anyways we the returns can be great for trading if you know what to do. It's, it's, it's something where you can certainly, certainly earn a living doing this. But again, the consistency is very important because if you're going to rely on, say, paying yourself, and I'm just going to use a number here, say you're like, I need to pull two grand a week out of my trading account to pay my bills, which is the equivalent of about eight grand a month, okay, which would be about 96 grand a year. If that's your goal, you can't take stupid trades. You can't gamble. It does not mean that every trade that you take will win, but it doesn't mean you're going to fall off the, 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 the cliff if you take a trade that loses. Sometimes I take trades that lose. I showed you the results for November. We did have a few losers, but we didn't have a lot. And if I have a lot losing trade, I will usually take another trade to try to come back. And if it doesn't work, I will stop. So you have to be disciplined with what you're doing, which is part of it is assessing your risk accordingly, making sure you get out with profits and following the system. Having a winning system is very important if you want to do this for a living. You just have to have way more winners than losers. But I think the problem is that people are so 
so ingrained in their mind in the fear mongering of the losses in their head that they kind of spiral out of control. And you can't allow that to happen to yourself. That's why the knowledge helps of understanding the system because you say, you know what? We're gonna get a good one tomorrow. We're gonna get a good one the next day. We're gonna get a big one soon. And I just know that. And I just know that because I've been doing this for so long that I know that and I know the market gives it and I understand how good gaps are and I know that they can go and they can go big. So I know we're gonna get a good one. Some days I get up, if there's no good trades, it doesn't, it's not, it's not stressful. You wait for the good ones because you're not gambling. It is not passive investing when you're trading. It's a job. It's a job. You have to take it as serious as that. If you don't do it, you're going to get fired. That's how you have to think of it. You're going to fire yourself if you're losing, or you should. Okay? You have to do well. What is the whole system based on? Institutional money. We're looking for the perfect, perfect, perfect entry. That's the goal. And I'm looking for selling or buying. I do tend to go to the short side first. I will say that. I will definitely say that. I like to short, okay? But we did go long Apple today. But it's based on institutional money. Big moves. Big, big money. It's coming in, scooping it up, or selling it off, okay? I'm following that. What happened today in Apple? Got bought. Rally. People bought it. In fact, we made a new high today, okay? But it's the point system. This is where the learning this is the meat and potatoes that comes in and you say, okay, I'm going to sit down and I'm very, I like to write stuff down. I was on the phone with somebody earlier, a, 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 a client, a trader, and she wasn't understanding something. I said, print out the chart, print it out, get a ruler, print it, draw on it, do it. I was trying to explain to her words she doesn't understand. I said, print it out, print it out, draw on the chart. I used to do that when I started. I printed thousands of charts when I was trying to develop my system. This was a long time ago. I had them in boxes and boxes, those little cardboard boxes I had them. They're somewhere in my parents' house back in Pennsylvania. It was very helpful. I write stuff down. I write down my checklist. I have a pen. I have paper. I have stickies. I have notebooks. I've got it all here. I, have, I work. I do the work. It's like if you were going in and you were going to do an audit or you were going in and you were going to you were going to write a brief if you were an attorney or you're an accountant and you got to get all the figures and the numbers. You got to you got to do the work. You go to the library. Okay? It's hands on. I think the computer age is great and it's fabulous and that's what makes electronic trading possible. We can press the button and be in a trade in seconds and be out in milliseconds too. But you have to get back to doing the work and sometimes people don't want to do the work that people don't want to learn anymore. They don't want to write stuff down. But you got to or you're never gonna get it. It's your brain that makes it possible because your brain is making decisions. Whether you think it is or not, it is. And some of the decisions have to be made quick, okay? And there's no getting around that. That's what the market is. I like it. It's fun to me, it's exciting to me. I like it. I sent out an email over the last couple of days about uh, brain food. Eat foods that are good for your brain. Take vitamins. Nuts are good for your brain. Vegetables, okay? Don't ever trade on an empty stomach. That's not good either. Always eat breakfast when I get up in the morning. I'm a morning person, but again, some of you might be in different time zones. It's important to have your brain working right. And again, that will help you not make choices based in fear that takes you down a road that's never good, okay? Learning is key. Knowledge is key. It's the point system for me. That's how I do it. But you've got to remember that it is about booking the money. It's not about holding forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Okay, you have to take it, be up, get out, chunk it, you chunk it out. And this is where, again, it is very possible to earn a living trading if you look at it like that, day by day, week by week, month by month. Sometimes people just can't wrap their head around the idea of making 100 grand a year or 200 grand a year as, a, as an income for trading because they just can't, because they've been losing for years, number one. And number two, they just can't wrap their head around that type of a number. It, it, it's, it's just chunk it out. 200, 300, 400, 400, 500, 200, it adds up. It adds up, okay? And again, it doesn't mean that you're not going to take a trade with me that loses. Some tra trades I take lose. But it's like taking 10 steps forward and two steps back. Three steps forward and one step back. 10 steps forward and three steps back. Do you understand? That's how it is. But you've got to be going up. You're going up the mountain. You're getting up. You're making it there. You may have to take a rest for a day. 
then you get going again and you keep going. And that's how learning is too. That's how learning is too. You come, you wanna do my class, you're gonna learn a lot in the weekend. You learn a ton. Are you gonna know everything by heart by then? No. No, you're not, but you're gonna learn a lot. And then you ask questions, like I was telling you was on the phone with the person earlier. You ask questions. Oh, now I get it. There you go. Oh, now I understand. Now I get it. And that's, and you trade and you do it and you boom, and that's how it is. It's a process. It's a process. It's like building a house. Okay? Everything's a process. Any questions? So this is about focus, picking one strategy to focus on to make money. For me, it is gaps. I called my system golden gaps because it's like finding gold in the market, but it's a 26 point rating system that I use to rate every gap that I do to make the determination what I wanna use to trade on any particular day. Again, we went long today, we went long Apple. I do prefer to short, but I will do longs if there's nothing good to the downside. And the volatility is here for the entire month of December. In fact, I will be shocked, I will be surprised if we play out the rest of the week, as everyone is now predicting after today's rally, that we're just going to fly over the high and, and just continue going higher. I don't know if that's the case. It could be the case. It might be. But I'm not so sure. And I wouldn't be surprised if something different happens. Even though they came out today and said, oh, this variant, it's, it's fine. It's not so bad. It's boop a doop a doo They change their mind every other day. Fauci changes his mind every other press conference. You never know. You can rely on one thing and one thing only. Things will change and they will change fast and speedily. And that is one thing that I know. So that is why the idea of chunking it out is important too, where you take profits when you're up because you could be up a lot of money, something, nothing, get out. And I reminded myself of that with that NVIDIA. I was up a lot and I didn't get out. Kathy's writing, okay. Anyways, following the system for consistent results today, we did Apple, we talked about it. Share size is about how many shares you will take per trade. This has to do with the size of your account, but your risk should be the same risk per trade. 500, 500, 500, 1,000, 1,000, whatever you want your risk to be. So in other words, you can't take five trades in a row and have very different risks. Your share quantity will be varied though. Why? Because the difference between the entry and the stop will be different. How do I know? I call it in the room. Again, if you would like a trial to the room, feel free to email me. You can come in for the rest of the week if you want a trial, just email me. But I would chunk it out if your goal for 2022 is to really dig your heels in and become a professional trader, or at least get going where you can rely on this for a part-time income that you can move into a full-time trader at some point towards you know the end of 2022. You have to prove to yourself you can do it first, really. And it is about chunking it out. Any questions here so far? Thank you, Kathy. So what is financial freedom? Let's discuss this. I've pretty much been discussing this for the last 19 months on TV. With all that happened with COVID, so many people lost their jobs in 2020. And now there's so many jobs available, not everyone is going back to work. Why? You have to take it upon yourself to know that the power is within you to determine your future. And I think that the idea of having multiple sources of income is extremely important, not just right now because of the state of the economy in 2021, but I always felt that way. I always felt that way. So you may have a full-time job. You could still trade on the side part-time. Options are an easy way to do that. You may have two part-time jobs. You can still trade on the side. Schedule yourself accordingly. Be in the day trade room two days a week, three days a week, one day a week, whatever. You could work full-time and trade full-time. If you do it from home, it's really nice. You could do it from home, work from home, and trade from home. A lot of people are doing that now, right now, still because of COVID. Do not rely on just one source of income because at the end of the day, you may find out that things change or stuff happens that is out of your control, and then you'll be faced with what? Similar to what people's positions were in 2020. You saw that with the real estate downturn, too, that happened last uh, year, at least in Manhattan. Now, it started to come back in other parts of the country explode it. You have to always look at it like you're thinking about the future. Where do you want to be? We talked about 2022. That's not that far away. That's not that far away. A lot of times people think, oh, well, they just keep living in the past. You're doing yourself a disservice by doing that. You really, really are. You have to change the energy and your thought processes about it. Because remember, there's lots of people there in the market that want your cash and want your money. So if you even have one negative thought that comes up in your head, you gotta squash it like a bug. 
I was on the phone with a friend the other day and I was talking about something. It was not trading, it was something else. It's another project I'm working on. And I was waiting to hear back from somebody and I didn't hear back from them immediately. I know that's crazy, but I didn't. Anyways, it, it, it was for a TV thing. And then I said, oh, I hate that I'm thinking negative. I said, I hate this, I hate thinking negative. This isn't like me, I don't wanna think negative. And then I heard from the person the next day. <laughs> I'm very, I'm very impatient, but I, I know myself so well that I know thinking negative is wrong and you work against yourself when you do. You almost like create the negativity. So I was like talking myself through my talking to my friend, talking myself out of the negativity, which I luckily did. But many people are so in their heads with their training and they also don't even realize that they're actually working against themselves and they stay in that negative mode and they stay in it for years. And I know this because I've had the stock switch business for so long now that I've heard so many stories from people. So many stories from people. Alan's here tonight. Alan has been following me for seven years. I don't know, maybe eight. Alan just joined. He didn't do his first trade yet. He's chomping up the bit. You know, the power is in you to move forward and make changes. You cannot be afraid. You cannot stay stuck. Staying where you are right now and staying stuck is just as bad as looking back and dwelling on the past. The only way to move forward is to actually take active steps towards your future, making the plan of action. Remember, get a notebook, get a piece of paper, write it down, boom, boom, boom. This is what I wanna make per month trading. This is where I wanna be by March 1st or January 1 or whatever, okay? Any questions? And Galahad, I saw you emailed me today. I will write you back. I'm sorry I didn't have time, but I will respond. Anyways, be realistic. Don't believe in fairy tales that are insane, but this doesn't mean that your dreams aren't possible. There's a difference between dreams and fairy tales. A dream is something where you have a goal and you are willing to do the hard work to achieve it and take the time and the money and the cost and do whatever it takes. A fairy tale is some where someone tells you you can open up an account with $500 and make 100 grand in 30 days, or that you don't have to pay for a class like mine and all of a sudden you're gonna make all this money in the market by just going into free chat rooms in the Reddit chat rooms. That's a fairy tale and totally unrealistic. And why it can happen to one in a billion person, it is not a plan of action for success. So there is a big difference between dreams and fairy tales. Dreams, and I'm speaking from experience here because I have many, many dreams and I'm working in the process of some of them right now. Some of them I've accomplished and some of them I'm still working on. It takes hard work. It takes hard work. It takes thinking positive, hard work. And sometimes the positive thinking is hard work like I just explained. There's a big difference between dreams and goals and fairy tales. And you can have big dreams. That's not a fairy tale. The fairy tale is thinking you don't have to do anything to get there. Okay? Market doesn't owe you anything. You have to do the work. And more importantly, you have to believe in yourself. So you can get there, but you have to do the work and there's a cost because there's a lot of people out there that want bank, a lot of people that want to be successful in the market, a lot of people that want money, a lot of people out there are smart, way smarter than you. So if you think you don't have to study or take a class to be successful, well, think again. I created my own system. I still took a class. I took one class training. I paid a lot of money for it. Actually, I paid more than my class. I'm charging for my class now. I did not learn how to make money in the market, but I did have a good basic foundation, and I took that information and created my own system, but it took me three years. It was a long haul. It was a lot of work. Again, what are you going to do? Cry, whine, complain about it. There's nothing you can do. you got to keep moving forward if you want to accomplish your goal. The goal isn't met until it's achieved. So there's no going back. There's only moving forward. And if you're stationary and you're not making choices and you can't make a decision, you're stuck and you're wishy-washy, well, that's basically like going back because the world is moving forward. I, I just can't believe it is almost 2022. I mean, I, I haven't even made plans for New Year's Eve yet. I'm like, I can't even deal with thinking about this now. It's not even Christmas. I mean, how can it almost be New Year's Eve? Shocking to me. Shocking how fast this year really just flew by. So risky money may be hard, but everything has a cost. The great thing is when you achieve it, when you get there and you can feel proud of yourself, you can feel good about yourself. And, and again, earning money, earning power, so critical, so important. Why some people are choosing not to work right now is beyond me. Again, I've been talking about this and discussing the unemployment numbers on TV. There's so many jobs out there. You know, getting money from the government is great when they want to send you a check, but you're never going to get rich doing that. You've got to take it upon yourself. Again, self-empowerment, self-improvement. 
Your dreams are achievable with money, time, and hard work. If you do that, you can get there. Is there any guarantees? No, but I can guarantee you one thing. If you quit, you definitely will not make it. So guess what? Don't quit. Many people attempt to trade and many, 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 many people quit. They just do. And they may trade on an active basis, on a regular basis, monthly or weekly. And But really, they've mentally, mentally quit, mentally checked out. Will never pay for a class. Will never really put in any effort. Their assumption going into every trade is that they will lose and they do it anyway. It's like a, it's like a bad habit. Like we we're talking about smoking. Do not think like that. You can do this. I've developed people into good traders. Some of you are here. Some of you know that. Anyways, it gets easier over time. That's the positive thing. But you've got to do the work and you've got to learn it. Day trading produces income. It's week by week. Okay? Again, we talked about financial freedom. And we talked about this. There's a big part of becoming successful is really facing the truth about how to achieve the results you want. There's a difference between fairy tale and achieving goals. And I think once people come to terms with that, it makes it a lot easier to move forward. At least I've found that with my own, some of my own dreams and goals. I've just come to terms with some of the timing of things. It's going to take longer for me to achieve some things that I want. And again, I'm specifically talking now about television because I have goals for that. I've been doing TV for seven years. And when I started, I had a dream that I would have my own television show about stocks. It took me less time to figure out how to trade. And here it is seven years. I am not giving up. And again, I'm willing to do the hard work and I'm pushing forward. But many people I know in the industry actually have given up, have given up. So it's, it's a difference between doing what it takes and just, you know, wussing out. And I think it's easier to complain than it is to do the work. And there's a cost to the work. Okay. It's part of what is involved. You gotta, you gotta pay your dues. Somebody said to me the other day, you gotta pay your dues, Melissa. I said, I paid my dues. I've been doing this for seven years. He said, well, not enough, he said. <laughs> I'm like, this is somebody that's, you know, much more experienced than me, been in television for 30 years and is giving me advice. And just like I'm giving you advice. He's giving me advice. I'm giving you advice. You see how it goes. You have to listen to people that have experience. There's no substitute, actually, for people that have experience in whatever thing you want to go to because that's who you want to go with. You want to be with someone that has experience in whatever uh, thing you're trying to do. If your goal is trading, you want to be with a ex trader that is experienced, that has an experienced system. Again, I created my system, you know, in 2009, and then it took me three years, so 2012. So we're going on 10 years here now. I've been doing this since I had all the pieces of the puzzle together, you know? Just like I'm taking advice from people in the television industry who've been in it and had real jobs and been doing it for over 20, 30 years. So you go to people and you pay people for advice and experience and you spend your time with those people so you can develop. You develop the learning, the procedures, the understanding of it, looking at the chart, you know? But anyways, trading only takes a short time a day and if you come and learn from me, you will learn what? You will learn my 26 point checklist. It is a rating system for gaps. It measures gaps for rating them in the daily chart to find stocks to trade that have, number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. Number two, a big move on the day, which we want. Number three, early confirmation of the bias of the move between 9.30 and 10. That's when I want to get in as quick as possible. And number four, precise entries with follow through and a good risk reward target potential, which of course is what we want. That is what we want. That's what we're looking for every time we do it. And again, you achieve your goals by chunking it out. Chunk it, chunk it, chunk it. That is important. That's how you're going to get it. So my class is called the Golden Gap. It is called the Golden Gap System. It is a 26-point professional bearish gap rating system. And the purpose of this system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. This checklist tells you what to trade, when, and in what direction. The 26-point checklist predicts directional bias in a stock. That's what you want. You want to get in and you want to get out. You can do it as day trades. You can do it as options. But it's one strategy. That's it. You come, you learn it, you can use it any way you want, and that is how I'm successful and is how you can be successful too. You do not need a general overall broad-based view to make money trading. Tons of people have that and they fail all the time. Why? Because they're too all over the place and they're doing things that don't work. And whether a stock had good earnings or bad earnings really doesn't necessarily tell you what direction the stock is going to trade in either. I'm reading institutional money and the price patterns and the gap, and that's how I'm making the direction where it's going to go. And if your reason for doing this is to make money, then you follow the system and you will make money. It does not mean every trade will be positive, but it means you will have way more positive trades than losing trades. 
And that is how you can move forward. Again, it is a process to get good, to know which ones are the good ones, to know which ones to hold, to know where the market's going as well. I talk about it in the room. That's the benefit of being in the room too, okay? I see we're, we're getting close to time here. I'll just go over. The class is called the Golden Gap Course. It is December 18th and 19th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. It's Saturday and Sunday. Last class for 2021. Class tuition is $69.99. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. The combo is the Golden Gap Course and the Trends Course. December 18th and 19th is the Golden Gap and the Trends is December 21st. The class tuition for this is $74.99. Again, class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. It is very, very important to understand what to do before you risk money in the market. And it's important to start out slow. But if you're doing well, you can up your risk very, very quickly. So I'm doing a December Golden Gap course special. If you sign up by Friday the 17th, you'll receive the live trading room free for one year. This is a great, great help for people. All the day trades for one year in the room free. The room is normally $500 a month after the class. So this expires December 17th. And if you're just interested in the options of a special for that too, but that expires actually tomorrow, the 8th. But anything you do, anything you decide that you want to spend money on a course is really you're helping yourself. So education is a gift to yourself because you're giving yourself the power of information which will help you in the long run. The Gap Options newsletter where you would receive the, like the Apple call I showed you is just the trades are emailed to you. They come directly emailed to you. This is not the room, and this is not a class. This is a subscription service that you can sign up for with no prerequisites. It's $69.99 a year, normal price. But the special through tomorrow, it ends tomorrow because one of the classes is Thursday. If you sign up by tomorrow for the letter for one year, you would pay $59.99. You save $1,000. It's a December holiday special, and you will get the Trends class and the Gap Options course free. The Gap Options course is Thursday the 9th from 11 to 3, and the trends class is 1221, which is 11 to 3. This deal ends tomorrow. Okay, I feel like I've been talking really fast. Any questions from anyone at all about anything? Let's see where we are tonight. Let's just look at everything here quickly up slightly we're up slightly we're down a little okay I'll let you test them any questions good group quiet group thank you for coming Thank you for staying. Email me at melissa at the stockswoosh.com if you have any questions or if you would like a trial to the room this week or if you're interested in the class or the options newsletter. Thank you, Kathy. I will talk to you soon. Excellent. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great night.